Our next uh, guest is uh, from the other side of the metro area. Uh, so we have with us today Shava Whitley, who is running for chair of the Washington County Board of Commissioners. Welcome, Shava. Hey, thank you for having me here, Larry. <laughs> See, I first met you uh, two years ago in 20, 2016 when you came over to a, a forum in, in Clatsop County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great time. At that point, I was running for a U.S. rep. I got a great opportunity to meet a lot of the progressive and the uh, Democrats over there on that side of the of Oregon. It was a great time, and you're a great uh, person to speak with, and we've kept that communication since then. Yeah, that was a fun night. Mm -hmm. So now you're running for uh, chair of uh, Washington County. What's mm -hmm. interesting about Oregon is that every county seems to be different in the way they've configured their commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Let's let's talk about what the commission is. So, how many how many members are on the commission in total? Um, on our commission, there's a total of five commissioners all together, and then uh, so four represent uh, four different parts of Washington County all together. And there's the at-large chair, which I'm running for, that represents all of it, including the unincorporated areas, um, at the same time. Yeah, that's interesting. So we have a home rule county, and uh, we also have five commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also, and, but all five are elected from districts. And then amongst the five of them, they pick their chair. Oh. Uh, yours is a, is your, is Washington County paid position or unpaid? It's a paid position. So all the um, commissioners um, all together, they get paid. I mean, it's, uh, if you look at it though, we're the second biggest uh, uh, county in Oregon and it's a big job. So you got to make sure those people are at least, uh, you know, uh, working as much as they can throughout the week. In addition, Washington County itself is almost as big as the smallest state at the same time. So it's a busy job and it takes more effort than some of the smaller counties here that um, that we have in Oregon altogether. You know, I've been watching the paid versus unpaid uh, behaviors and I'm, I'm coming on the side of wanting them to be paid because mm -hmm. there seems to be a sense of accountability that commissioners get when, when they, they act like it's a job. Uh, mm -hmm. When they do it for free, they seem to have much more freedom to ignore the public and and uh, uh, follow their own views. You might say. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, it's it's very important uh, as of right now. One of the things I'd want to change is that a lot of our commissioners are all of them except the chair is part time at this moment. And uh, compared to Multnomah, I believe all the uh, commissioners there are full-time employees there. So we definitely, as we're moving, again, second biggest uh, county in Oregon, addition to being very big, in addition to all the growth that we're experiencing and all the you know new resource that, resources that we're going to need, we're definitely going to need to increase the staff levels, not only in the different departments that's ran by the board, but the board itself. So Washington County has undergone massive changes over the past 40 years. It used to be a farming community, and then uh, Intel moved in and brought in literally thousands and thousands of high-tech workers, uh, and all of them settled around there. And, and, of course, you got the accompanying residential areas that grew up around that that was never there before. Uh, so it's actually quite different than any other county in the state. Mm -hmm. um, what what issues... Uh, are you hearing when you walk when you walk the the uh, district and talk to people? Yeah, uh, and I appreciate you talking about the overall diversity of the county and what type of jobs are available and the people at the same time. One of the things that people don't know about really is that as far as diversity, Washington County by percentage is the most diverse uh, county that we have in Oregon. Period. Um, uh, compared to Multnomah, we're still the most diverse. But it's very interesting that you know you drive about you know. 10 blocks to the left, you're, you're, you're hitting Intel, you're hitting shopping areas, you go to the right and you're seeing nothing but farmland basically. And so we, we deal with a lot of diverse um, issues when it comes to, you know, having a community like that. Uh, typically the, the main thing is um, housing. That's the number one thing. Every forum I've gone to, that's been the number one thing on everyone, uh, everyone's mind. Uh, you got the fact that, um, you know, as we, you know, with any city or county, as it becomes richer or affluent, you know, people get pushed out. Rents go dramatically high. And, you know, as most people are experiencing throughout the metro area, there's no type of rent control. You have rents going up 20, 30, 40, 50 percent in some areas is doubling. And what that does is causes issues uh, for young families that want to move here because of jobs. They don't have an affordable place to move into. That's causing issues. 
In addition to that, you have people who are retiring, um, in some cases who have their social security, who have their pensions, who have their savings, and are still about one or two increases away from being kicked out of their um, you know, place without any adequate support there. So uh, that's the number, uh, number one issue. Um, uh, outside of that, it's infrastructure. Um, you got a lot of the time where, you know, there's places out here where there's just no sidewalks um, available. I myself, I adopted my little brother. And if I wanted to walk him to school or walk to the local grocery store, I had to either choose between being in the ditch. Uh, to the left of me, there is a cars going at about 50 to 60 miles an hour. And on the other side, there's trees that have to walk in between. So those are type of some of the issues that we were uh, experiencing out here. And it's because the way the, the board has set up the, um, you know, the, the, the growth um, here in uh, Washington County, this is a plan that we made in the, the late 80s to early 90s, where we had a vision as to how this county would grow. But we've definitely outgrown that. We have about 33 families moving here per day. We have about 75,000 cars coming into Washington County every day. So we definitely need to change the way, you know, we're seeing growth in the next uh, decade altogether. So did you, do you have any proposals for housing or is that still uh, something to be decided on what to do about this mm -hmm. issue? Yeah. So one of the things we're working on right now, um, actually Metro's working on it, is a, a region ride um, a bond. So the proposal is about $500 million altogether. And uh, that's going to be used to increase the units that we have available in addition to having homes available that um, – uh, families who make um, you know less than eighty or a hundred thousand dollars can still afford, like your um, you know your school teachers or you know some of the other local workers um, that live in your area. That way, you know people who work here have the opportunity to live here at, uh, at the same time. But one of the things I'm one of the only candidates that mentioned this is rent control. We definitely have to look at it. Uh, you know, one of the other opponents talk about you know you pay for this or fiscal responsibility, and rent control is not a radical thing. It's conventional. You, it, it makes no sense to, you know, if we get this $500 million bond measure um, for it to be, you know, we spend the money, we make the units and for those units to be um, not affordable anymore within the five to 10 uh, year range. And that's what happens in Portland. They built some places. Um, it was affordable for a while. And then eventually it's just not affordable anymore. So I think for us to be fiscally responsible and to be conventional and smart and progressive at the same time, we have to have adequate, uh, rent control to go with it. In addition to that, we have to go look at um, community land trusts. We have to make sure that a lot of people who live in their communities have control over the place they live at the same time. Uh, during these um, these type of uh, policies that I want to enact or support, even at the state level, you know, this will make affordable housing, you know, not just something that we say, but part of the county DNA at the same time. So we have to have long-term goals to make sure that people who want to come here can afford to be here, work, contribute to their community, and people that retire and who put in the work and have the roots here have a place to go to when they retire and want to live the rest of their lives here at the same time. Another little interesting tidbit is that, you know, Washington County um, has one of the lowest are the lowest um, uh, unemployment rates in uh, all of Oregon. Uh, the tidbit that a lot of people don't acknowledge is that 30, 33% of incomes and our county don't support an individual to live on their own. So we have to think critically about that. If 33% of the people can't support themselves through the jobs that you know they work at, we either have to get serious about affordable housing, that way people don't have to use a lot of their incomes to, to find a place to live, or we have to increase the wages. Those are our only two choices. Or we are systematically causing the um, houseless, uh, the homeless population or the uh, um, affordable housing crisis that we have now. So in addition to housing, what would be the second most important issue that you're, you're hearing about? So uh, infrastructure was the second, but as oh. far as like everything else, it would be like <laughs> um, the services. Um, you know, we're growing bigger. Not only that are we growing bigger, but we, our problems are evolving at the same time. So a lot of our departments here by policy are running kind of thin. And we can't run that way anymore through our sheriff's department, through our mental health, our health services and um, the, the benefits or the emergency services that we provide the families that are going through critical times. Uh, we have to increase those because we're getting tons and tons of people. And as the county grows, um, 
just more problems altogether. So we definitely have to look at that. One of my main focuses as far as programs is uh, mental health services. Um, that's one of our critical things that we need to support because, you know, it's one of the things that we, um, not we as a county, but nationwide, to, you know, severely lack as far as putting resources and infrastructure in. Um, you know, we, one of the bad things here, as far as mental health, we actually lead at some of the highest suicide rates here. You know, we have people who, you know, have mental crises and we need to make sure that, you know, they're adequately uh, taken care of. And when we have situations a lot arise, that we have appropriate de-escalation uh, methods available. Um, in our county, our sheriff's department actually, um, has a program where uh, a mental health professional actually rides with a deputy to certain places and events that are happening to, um, as a, a partnership to, to de-escalate a lot of uh, situations. And I think that's uh, an example of one of the services that I would want to put more uh, resources in to make sure we're appropriately serving the people in our community. And what, is, what would be the fourth? The fourth, um, let's see, uh, if I would say the fourth is overall, you know, kids, you know, um, I think that's uh, actually, I would say that is the above all else. That would be one of the things that we have to pay attention to. You know, we have a growing population of kids in our community. We're building more schools, more families are moving here. So we got to make sure that we're doing right by kids. In addition to our growth, we have to make sure that we build this sense of culture and community that the kids can enjoy and participate in. In addition to that, uh, kids whose families are in the lower part of the income scale, um, we have to make sure that we're giving adequate funds to make sure that um, they have after school programs to go to summer school programs or uh, summer programs to attend to uh, in addition to having jobs available. These are some of the critical things that contribute to, you know, kids overall growth. And you talk with a lot of the uh, small business owners, their fear is that a lot of the kids these days uh, don't have some of the discipline in there. And I say, it's not their fault as ours. They go to school about eight to nine hours a day. This is something that we should be providing or teaching them. We have to really look at the programs that we provide to them and give them an opportunity to, to, to learn these skills and, and do right by them. Uh, there's statistics that actually show um, after school programs and summer programs uh, benefit uh, kids a lot. They're less likely to go to jail. They're less likely to have issues um, in life growing up, um, more likely to go to college, things like that. So we definitely have to support this um, because it's great for our community and it's great for the future. And um, we have to do the best we can to make sure they have that benefit. What's the budget for Washington County government? It's a lot. So it's over uh, uh, the last time I checked about $1.6 billion. Uh, with that, we have our operating fund. Uh, you know, we operate all the different departments that we have in the county. Uh, the last couple of years, we had a little bit of about 20 to 27 percent um, general like fund that we have as a buffer, basically. So if emergencies come up. Um, we're able to um, access funds from there and pay for it. Or if certain programs come up, we're able to pay for it with that as well. Um, that's been steadily decreasing because of, you know, people that, you know, have been moving in, uh, more programs that we have to uh, sponsor and support, and overall increasing the size of um, certain departments and services that we provide. So we do have a little bit of money to work with. In addition to that, we have a lot of things that we have to work on. Again, critical things like housing and infrastructure. You know, as the kids come in and the families come in, and um, we have to make sure that, um, you know, they have sidewalks to be on and intersections that are very dangerous. I don't know if you ever uh, drove out here, but there's some spots where you don't know the turn left, right, go straight. And we have to fix those type of areas because they're very dangerous, especially as the uh, car population um, um, increases here too. Uh, another thing is job training. Uh, we have to look at the future of <clears throat> what's going to happen. And, you know, people are saying, you know, there's a fear that, you know, for example, the checkout uh, uh, places in um, like a supermarket, those are going away and being replaced by computers. But you have to understand that, that we have to have people that do maintenance on those computers. And so we really have to change, change the dynamic and, you know, the traditional way of teaching and educating people to more that's more uh, technologically um, inclusive, basically. So Betsy, I completely forgot to ask if there were questions for Casey. Do we have uh, any questions on the line for uh, Shaba? Yeah, uh, Oz Hi, Lefebvre um, asks, how do you propose to bring or grow more living wage jobs to the county? 
yeah, definitely. We we definitely have some um, some influence as to what kind of jobs are um, you know that we have here. I think it goes back to the whole job, job training thing. When companies uh, that pay well um, are thinking about moving their HQ or have a satellite location, one of the main things they look at is the uh, the, the education within the population. So I think one of the ways that we can get involved is ha- increasing job programs um, that are available in the community, educating our workforce so they're able to do those higher level, higher tier jobs and being very attractive to a lot of companies that are looking for places to move to. Um, uh, there were situations, I forget the state and the company, but they rejected an offer simply because they didn't have enough of an educated population. So we can get aggressive like that, sponsoring trade programs, uh, certification in certain technological fields and just overall doing right by our community and attracting those high wage uh, uh, jobs and companies. Is there any other questions, Betsy? <laughs> no, that was it. Mm-hmm. I got yeah, one. They, I got oh, one. Go ahead, John. <laughs> we were talking in green room uh, about, uh, I mean, a little bit about what a, a county commissioner does, because that's, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those roles that not a lot of people know. We know the big mm-hmm. reps and the big names. And, you know, you were talking about having some say over what goes on in the sheriff's department. Can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about the changes you would make in justice reform that you could make with the, with that power? Yeah, you know, some of the things that I'm interested in doing, and I've actually talked to um, one of the DA candidates that we have here. I'm going to be meeting with the other one soon. I've met with the sheriff, and all three of us are on board saying, hey, we need to reduce the amount of people that go to jail. One of my main focuses is the kids. You know, studies show that, you know, you you know, you know can keep a kid out of the system. They're most likely to not be in the system as they grow up. So we really have to look at um, diversion programs, you know, getting people from the school board, the schools, the parents, the sheriff's department, the DA together in the judge and say, hey, we, we understand you probably did something bad. We don't want this to follow you around the rest of your life. Let's do this. Let's have you volunteer. Let's give you extra resources that way. um, You know, you're you're set up for life and and you don't have to go into prison or jail and uh, give you another opportunity to be a good person because I believe most people are innately uh, good people. But the other side to that, it's just cheaper uh, to be a better, you know, to be better to your community and to do right by kids. It's very expensive to put someone in prison or jail. It costs way too much money, and those monies can go to other things that are critically needed um, within the community. So if you look at it that way and say, hey, you want to help this kid, you want to do right by him, give him the extra services. Yes, we spend money uh, to do right by this kid, but in addition to that, um, we save money in the long end and, and give this kid an opportunity to be successful in the rest of his life. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So if uh, we want to help your campaign, Shaba, how do we how do we connect with you? Yeah, you know, one of the things that, you know, I'm really needing is uh, volunteers. Um, You know, one of the things we're doing as well is we're not taking any corporate money. I am the only candidate that has not taken any business money, corporate money or land developer money. Uh, Some of the things that contribute to a lot of the issues within my county. So we need volunteers Uh, and volunteering isn't just knocking doors, it's sharing posts, it's mailing, it's talking to your friends, it's uh, uh, house meetings, things like that. So if you want to help out, go to www.shabawoodley.com and click on the volunteer tab. First name Shaba is S-H-A-B-B-A. Last name is Woodley, W-O-O-D-L-E-Y. Also, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to contact me. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Excellent. And is there any closing statements you'd like to make before we uh, we end? Yeah, you know, I pretty much like to keep it short on closing messages. I mean, the fact is, you know, the issues that I've talked about today, the issues that Casey has talked about, it's these are typical problems that a lot of people are experiencing in different regions of Oregon. I went to Washington and they're talking about the same issues, too. And that's because you got the same people moving between different positions, promising the same thing but being supported by the same people that are contributing to the issues within your community. You have to get different with it. You have to look at different people who are willing to do things differently and work only to, and beholden only to the interests of the the people at the same time. So don't vote for what's comfortable, vote for the change, vote for what's conventional, you know, against the status quo and and vote for someone who would work in your best interests. And I'm happy uh, to, to speak before you today and, um, 
and I look forward to winning this and doing great things for Washington County. Shaba, thank you so much for running. Thank you. It's, it's so great to see people out there who still believe in democracy and want the system to work. Definitely. Thank you, and I appreciate it, and you have a nice day, all of you, okay? okay. Bye, Shaba.